Let me cut the chain. I believe that Albedo himself was the forbidden knowledge that destroyed Conria. Albedo is one of the most eccentric and mysterious units in the entirety of the game. However, despite his introduction seeming abrupt, Albedo immediately cemented himself as one of the vital players in the story of Genshin. To answer the title of the video, yes. I believe that Albedo will destroy Mondstadt due to the corruption of his being, and at least undergo a character change so devastating to his entire existence that he will grow as a character. Let's begin with the most obvious evidence of his corruption, and how he was created based on already existing material we have. We can make educated guesses that Albedo is not human. His character stories speak of chalk and soil being the purest substance, and that primordial man birthed from chalk. Venti also makes a notion about this in his line about Albedo. He hints that Albedo's creator used the purest soil to create man, but that kind of creation is dangerous because it harnesses a form of purity that man should never meddle with. In his third story, his master even says that the chalk is him. He makes Cecilius from dust, he creates life from drawings, and his elemental skill makes flowers from geo. From his story, this is known as the Conrian art of Chemia. We also know that the flowers created from his skill are alive, unlike Mona's taunt or Gamia's flower or Amber's barren bunny. His fourth ascension emphasizes a theory he's a homunculus, and his e-skill uses the word abiogenesis, which is a theory of creation that states that life arose from non-life more than 3.5 billion years ago. But what effects do we really have if a character is artificial? Well, an implication of a character being artificially created is that their purpose was already planned by another being. Intentionally. Perhaps, in Albedo's case, it is destruction and perfection. The last line of his character story already paints him as a creature that is fated to eventually destroy Mondstadt because he lost control. The question is, control of what? What ulterior motive could Albedo have with the destruction of Mondstadt? Or rather, what ulterior motive could his master have? Albedo's story is littered with hints of his connection with Conria, not only from his practice of the art of Chemia, but also from other subtle hints in his design. We can make guesses to this from Albedo's constellation names. Flower of Eden most likely references the Bible's Genesis, in which Adam and Eve were once inhabitants of a perfect paradise, only to stumble upon forbidden knowledge. This was what angered God and let the two be cast out of Utopia. Conria is known as a nation of advancement and was destroyed by the gods. The reason is still unknown, but we do know that in the past, it was a prosperous and autonomous entity, described by Dainsleep as the pride of humankind. Perhaps, just like Adam and Eve, Conria itself found forbidden knowledge, and as retribution, the gods stripped them of their paradise. This is hinted by one of Conria's alchemists named Gold, whose bottomless desire to create even more powerful creatures led to the destruction of the Eclipse Dynasty. Gold was also the one who corrupted Durin, who played a massive role in Albedo's quest for the festering desire. It should also be noted that it was Barbados who stepped in to stop Durin, therefore completing the god allegory of a divine entity stopping human corruption. If Conria was a nation that prospered in creation and corruption, it would make sense why Albedo is the way he is. If Albedo is a flower from the perfect Garden of Eden, then he is the forbidden knowledge. The opening of Phanerozoic references a time where abundant animal life and plant life started to exist in our world, as well as how hard shells perversed. This was a time of evolution and adaptation for the Earth. Perhaps this is a hint to the consequences of Conria's destruction, where the civilization fell and the people evolved into the abyss. It is also during this time that plant life evolved in the form of the archaic ley lines, as well as the corruption of the regis vines as we saw in the 1.2 event. The opening of Anerozoic could reference a time in Conria in which gold was most active. Corruption of several different kinds of animals was what eventually led to the destruction of Conria. 
race of Helios derives from Greek mythology. Helios is the god of the sun. He is often depicted in art with a radiant crown and driving a horse-drawn chariot. Sun was never in Albedo's character. Well, not to such an extent as flowers and chalk. Except in his color design, food preference, and his name card design. The Sunshine Sprat and the Sun Blossom, respectively. Another one is that he is often seen with a radiant crown, which could be a reference to Albedo's breed. The references stop there because Helios was eventually changed into Apollo after the Hellenistic period. Apollo is recognized as the god of music, poetry, art, prophecy, truth, archery, plague, healing, sun, and light. Albedo is an artistic genius, and from the Windbloom event's Ballad of the Breeze, we know that he has an innate talent for the musicals. This is seen in the Frost Parable's highest score. But let's understand Apollo and Albedo's lore parallel. Apollo is also birthed from Zeus's mind and was willing to share his divine knowledge to humanity. He was the personification of the truth. Apollo is also seen as both a blessing and a curse to humanity, as the knowledge he possessed was far too divine for human comprehension. Apollo was also the one who told Heracles to complete the ten tasks given to him by King Eurystheus during his trials. The Greeks associated the name Apollo to the name Apollemy, which means destroy, Apollices, which means redemption, and Apollucis, which means purification. Truth and prophecy are substantial in Albedo's story, as his reason for creation was to understand the truth of the world. He is also good friends with Mona, who is an expert diviner. Albedo is the chief alchemist of Mondstadt and is therefore seen as an important figure to the Knights of Avonius. However, several people are wary of him, and for good reason. Albedo was also the one who gave the Traveler a better understanding of himself based on the trials and experiments he did in the first character story. The parallels of Apollo and Albedo are existent. So, perhaps Albedo's role in the Conrian destruction was that he was meant to be a pursued knowledge. Perhaps he was a creation fated for redemption and purification of the wrongs that Conria has committed. That brings us to the fourth constellation, the descent of divinity. Lestia has descended to stop Conria. But why? The tide of Hadean shows us the physical reality of Conria's fall. The name Hadean comes from Hades, the god of the underworld. It describes a period in Earth's history where hellish conditions then prevailed the Earth. This is an artwork of the Hadean Eon by Tim Burtonley. You can understand why it would have parallels to the fall of Conria. Tides of Hadean, however, did give birth to the sediments that we know today. Landforms, mountains, even water bodies would not be possible if it weren't for the tide of Hadean. From nothing, there is life. From destruction, there is redemption. The dust of purification is simply that. Purification. From a time of blackening comes a process in which perfection is attained. Albedo's fate is to restore that purification. To perhaps save those that were already doomed to be tainted. Perhaps his fate is restore Conria through the art of Kenya. Albedo's character revolves around progress. He, too, is a work in progress. As his namesake, he is at the second phase of the magnum opus, which is the alchemical and hermetic tradition of transmutation. It is a process that creates the Philosopher's Stone. The stone itself was believed to be miraculous, an object that bore the elixir of life. There are four stages to the magnum opus, Gredo, Albedo, Rubido, and the Trinitus. At least... According to Albedo, but he's wrong. The Trinitus is not the final stage. And that actually brings us a whole lot of understanding of Albedo's fate. The magnum opus has psychological and symbolic meaning in the field of philosophy. The Trinitus is known as a stage of education in which an individual processes unfacilitating one's relation to the world at large. Rubido is a stage of transformation. Rubido is the authentic personification and realization of individuation. Basically, Isitrinitus is where you realize that your actions could have detrimental consequences to the world around you, 
Philosophically, Rubido is the refinement of emotion. Because Albedo is missing Chitrinitus when it should be the other way around, he already has made a fatal error to his own magnum opus. Specifically, that he, if ever he does undergo the transformation, would not understand the implications that it could have the world. An implication to this is that Albedo's perception of meaning and worth is tainted. But it is understandable. So, what happens now? Well, the Trinitus happens. As he said, the Trinitus is known as the Goldening, and at first it could be chalked up to simply an error. What's the difference? Both lead to perfection anyway. Well, that too was the belief of Conraya's alchemist, Gold. Known as the great sinner who was responsible for the destruction of Conraya, Glacia ended the creatures brought by such heinous manipulation of alchemy. By extension, the nation. In an official forum posted by Mihoyo in September 27, 2020, we further understand Albedo's connections with gold. Chalk pursues gold. That is a true future for Albedo. His future endeavors will eventually lead him closer and closer to the truth of the world. Rather, the truth that gold had found many years ago. And perhaps his reason for destroying Mondstadt is because of such a history connected to his origin. It is not impossible that Rhindaughter knows gold, especially since gold was a strong practitioner of chemia. Therefore, if the process that created Albedo in the first place was through the same origins as gold's other abominations, then maybe it is simply his master's influence that allowed him to take control of the corruption in the first place. Albedo knows that he must expose himself to the corruption in order to fulfill his master's assignment to him. That inevitably, his own curiosity will be what brings ruin. But because of his flawed perception of his own magnum opus, Albedo is fated to fail. What could corrupt Albedo is the same magic that corrupted the people of the Abyss. But since he is a homunculus, the way he is corrupted will be similar to Durin, rather than the conscious beings we know the Abyss are. It is also noted that in the Dragonspine Spear, Durin actually does share personality traits to Albedo. He was a benevolent being before Gold's corruption, one who valued the people of Mondstadt despite being an outsider. He had dreamed of preventing the Valen and Barbados during his time alive. But fate had other plans. Perhaps that is why Albedo cares for Mondstadt, and why his fate only leads him further into the city of freedom's demise. Perhaps the reason for his creation was to be a new hope for Conria, an advanced homunculus capable of emotion, articulation, and the mimicry of human life. We know that he is human enough to fool others, and that he is capable of wielding a vision. Therefore, his existence is already cemented as sentient. Maybe, since chalk is a pure substance in Chemia's alchemy, he was simply lucky for existing, and that his new purpose was becoming the new hope for Kanaria's research. However, it isn't impossible that the way he was created was through the same process as how everything else was destroyed. After all, cataclysm precedes creation in the eyes of alchemy. <laughs> Thank you.